Hello, we want to welcome you to Crooked Courage, our podcast. So many times we pass people on the street and maybe it's the beggar, or maybe it's the restaurant owner, and we make all kinds of assumptions about people without ever knowing them. Here on Crooked Courage, we try to tell the story of everyday humans. And so today on our podcast, we have Bruce Wesley the third. Correct who is the owner of the Wesley Shoe Store. Yes. Say that correct. So we're so excited to have him um, with us today. And uh, those of you who have been watching before, we're glad that you've come back again. And we hope we even gain some new viewers today. Welcome to Crooked Courage. So my first question for you today is, sure. when you were a little boy, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, grew, grew up? Um, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't, you know, well, I should start. <laughs> <laughs> no, it probably wasn't. A, I was really into military stuff. My dad was a, a sergeant in the army, mm -hmm. and he always had. Uh, when everybody else had regular pedestrian cars, he would have army trucks. He would drive home and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always liked the military stuff, so I wanted to be in the military. I wanted to wear the uniform, you know. <laughs> that didn't last too long, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So I kind of was, <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah. Uh, after that, of course, uh, kind of followed my dad's footsteps. Uh, he was um, an entrepreneur, a real entrepreneur at heart, and he uh, started the first our first store in 1970. So this is our 50th anniversary right now, and we're currently the oldest black-owned uh, independent shoe retailer in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, he started. He took over a store in. Uh, Michigan Avenue, South Michigan Avenue in Roseland. And he would always tell the story. And my dad grew up poor. He was uh, from Louisiana, in the, out in Pinkertville, uh, Donaldsonville, Donaldsonville, Louisiana. And he always told this story, and I thought he was joking, but he said, I, Son, I, I grew up, I didn't have any shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, he's joking, he ain't got no shoes. <laughs> he, not, he was serious, <laughs> he didn't have any shoes for the longest. Mm -hmm. And he uh, went to the military, and then he uh, migrated up here like a lot of people did in that time, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he opened the first store in 1970 on South Michigan Avenue in the Roseland area, and we took over an existing store. And uh, he just, uh, I see him built the business from the ground up. Mm -hmm. So when most kids were watching cartoons on Saturday morning, he was like, son, get out of bed and come on and move those, uh, move those shoe boxes and do this, yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so. I have a home in historical Pullman, and so uh, oh, wow. I drove okay. right on over to Michigan. And oh, yeah. I heard back in the day, because I'm a transplant to okay. Chicago, yeah. that it was really, and I can imagine, because it looks like it used to be really a bustling place. Oh, it was business. a thriving community. I couldn't believe you. Know, we were across the street from this big store. It was called Gately's People Store. Mm -hmm. And it was like the Marshall Fields of the South Side, you know. Mm -hmm. It was uh, really an our street, we had J.C. Penney's two doors from us. Mm -hmm. We had all these stores. I mean, just bustling with uh, activity. You know, it was that's the way the marketplace was. Then you know, just stores, 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 and stores. But we had a great location. It was right across from this Gately's People Store. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think the Pullman Porter or that company had any impact, or what caused that street to be so bustling? You know. That's a good question. I, I think um, that was the niche, you know, even before cause when we got there. We, were, we came at a period in time where the, uh, it was making that transition. A lot of the whites were moving out mm -hmm. and the blacks were moving in. And my dad saw that. Mm -hmm. And he saw that the feet feats were changing, you know. I mean, uh, we tend to have a little larger feet, you know, sometimes. Really? Back then, yeah. I mean, okay. we, well, he got his niche, let's put it that way. His niche was finding those larger sizes. And uh, the lady that we took over the store, she had all these little narrow shoes. and She had shoes from year one that were just accumulating back there mm -hmm. in the stock room. <laughs> so my dad found his niche in wider widths, mm -hmm. larger sizes, and he started doing more uh, catering to the new, you know, the new audience mm -hmm. that was coming in. You know, So uh, we started just slowly molding it to, you know, our community, so. I'm still intrigued, like, you know, there's Harold's Chicken Shack, there's all kind of food restaurants and oh, catering. Yeah. Yeah. 
like what made your dad go with shoes and you know like <laughs> what was on his mind well, prior to that Louisiana <laughs> no he had uh, he had when he uh he, my dad was an entrepreneur mm -hmm. he worked for some uh, Jewish brothers at oldest mm -hmm. 187 street called uh Sam Divine and the Sons mm -hmm. and uh he worked for them for a few years and got the he got the feel for running the business and uh he just had it in his blood. He wanted to do it on his own. So, he, you know, mm -hmm. so and the rest Powerful. is history. Powerful. And so did you guys open more than one shoe store? Like, I know where you were. How did you get all the way from 100 and something to <laughs> Hyde Park? What's yeah. that journey? Well, he, uh, we eventually bought the building. Well, we owned the building eventually. And then uh, we actually bought it. There was another store right adjacent to us. We bought that store next to us. And he literally put a hole in the wall, and connected them together, and so he went from just women and childrens to uh, women, children, and men. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we had a complete com collection. And this was the seventies. Men were wearing platform shoes, mm -hmm. high heels. Mm -hmm. It was the seventies. We were wearing, we were selling the crazy stuff, you know. Uh -huh, uh -huh, and uh, uh -huh. eventually, we finally, at that time, Floorshine was the big brand name. Yeah, so we finally that. landed Floorshine and Stacy Adams, and mm -hmm. that was like, put us on the map. You know, mm -hmm. it was like, oh wow, they got floor shot Stacey Adams, and that was like, really the elite thing then. So we had that, and then eventually, as time went on, we moved into uh, we were Nike account. We were Nike's first uh, black-owned account in the uh, state. You know, mm -hmm. it was back then. It was called BRS Distribution, mm -hmm. and my brother Claude, he was on top of it. He was like. We got to get into this Nike thing. I was still on Chuck Taylor's and Converse. Mm -hmm. but he was like, oh no, we got to do this Nike thing. And mm -hmm. well, of course, it blew up, and you know, that was a good thing. But, but our store has changed a lot since then. You know, it's evolved. Uh, yeah, we eventually moved, uh, we had the store there, and we had the opportunity to buy, I told you, the, the Divine Brothers who had the 87th Street store, mm -hmm. they had branched into Hyde Park, and they had several stores. They were second generation, uh, mm -hmm. third generation shoe family and he had the store in Hyde Park and these guys were ready to about retire and so uh, I was in college and I was at the University of Illinois and I was working part-time for them they wanted me to learn the business Harry and Joe uh, just like I was a son you know they showed me the business I worked for them this is probably about 1980 and around 1982 we bought the store from them mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't a smooth transition let me put it that way we were the first black-owned uh, store in the shopping center. In fact, when it was found out that there were some people from Roseland coming into Hyde Park Shopping Center, they called a special meeting to uh, with all the merchants and wow. to block us from getting that lease. They tried everything they could. And uh, it wasn't the University of Chicago owning it back then. I think it was uh, Rubloff or something, you know. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, they tried everything they could to block us from getting that lease. But uh, the Divine Brothers literally had to, uh, like, to do a car uh, sign for us to, to take over the lease, which is uncommon nowadays, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but we wound up, uh, you know, paying them off for a record amount of time. And my dad wanted to make very little changes. He was like, we're going to keep the same name. We're going to keep everything smooth. We even hired the same people. Mm -hmm. We had Harry and Joe were working for us. Mm -hmm. And we were literally wanted no changes, real smooth, you know. So we just kept it that way for many years. Mm -hmm. And then slowly I started bringing in the, instead of calling it the shoe corral, it looked like a shoe corral back then. Mm -hmm. I started calling it Wesley shoe corral. We started putting more of our own element in there. We started uh, gearing it more upscale with better quality shoes for the marketplace. We got out of the Western boots and got more into the comfort shoes, mm -hmm. into the, you know, more the Euro comfort. We started bringing in more imported shoes and things that uh, you couldn't find everywhere. We started shopping in Europe and bringing in brands never heard of before, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and we started catering it to the marketplace. And that was through the early 90s, and they renovated the mall, mm -hmm, and they mm -hmm. built a new storefront for us, and now it's Wesley Shoes. So we've been up and running now, 50 years, and uh, just recently we were ranked number one independent shoe I retailer in Illinois, and we were ranked number 13th 13. in the USA. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's, yeah. I wonder what goes into being number 13 independent, you know, I don't even know. I know there's Alamo on the north side. Are they considered independent? Yeah, yeah. Great store. Love uh -huh. them. Uh, 
fact, good friends with them, uh, the family, great store, but we ranked higher than like right. I said, anybody I, I, could, I was, in I, Illinois. I, yeah, a great store, and I learned a lot from uh, from that family. But yes, we uh, we we uh, thrive on being a sit and fit store. Mm -hmm. uh, going back in the old days, there were stores like Sherman's uh, uh, and lots of other brand names that have disappeared and they're not mm -hmm. on the planet anymore. But there were stores that were sit and fit, and they thrived on that. And that's what we are. The, ex the experience is measuring the foot. Uh, a lot of people don't understand that there was no DSWs and warehouse stores and all mm -hmm. that. There were people came in and they, they helped you try on the shoe. Not only that, we, we've taken it to a whole nother level. Like we don't use a Brand Act device. We have a, a machine that scans your foot mm -hmm. and it shows you the pronation, it shows you the arch size, shows you their uh, arch, their instep, their width. And it's all computerized, a three-dimensional scanner. Mm -hmm. It's like the latest technology. And uh, we really zoom in on comfort. That's what we're all about is comfort. That's been our niche. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, I, yeah, when I first moved to Hyde Park over 20 plus years ago, it was really about the mom and pa shops and, you know, the individual and indistin distinct flavor of families who own businesses. There were a Freeland Pot store. And mm -hmm. There was a Chinese store owned by a Chinese family up mm -hmm. on 53rd. Oh, yeah. um, and more and more, I'm seeing that change. Um, there's 57th Street Co-op Bookstore. All of these places were just, something about them was very special, sure. including your store. You. How have you managed to stay in business when so many others, and then there was the um, jewelry store. Yeah, and I know oh, he decided yeah, to yeah, retire. Yeah, yeah, great guy, But Supreme yeah. Jewelers, I yeah, think it was called. Yeah, yeah, so there's just all these shops yeah. that were very personal, one owner kind of thing, not a yeah. franchise. Yeah. and you felt that personal care. Yeah. How have you managed in a consumer culture where you can pop in Target and it is about convenience, yeah. how has Wesley managed to stay in business? Well, it's about building relationships. And over the years, we've built relationships and we continue to introduce the newer generation to the fit and sit theory of fitting shoes and you know not just coming in and grabbing them off the shelf. We actually fit them. That's what we're all about still to the day. We uh, have great staff, a great team of people. We've got people that have been working with me for over 20 and 30 years, mm -hmm. and they're experienced, they know the business. Uh, I've got Ann, who used to uh, run the store downtown at train station. She's been with us probably 20 years. Roger, he's been with us uh, at least another 20, 25 years. Then we've got new blood that we're bringing in. I had some of the kids that I used to wait on when they were uh, mm -hmm. 10, 12 years old, they actually, Called their parents and said, "Hey, what's your daughter doing?" You know, mm -hmm. I've had two or three of those, and they're, you know, and they wind up. They're still working for me now. Yeah. One is a University of Chicago student. One just graduated from Howard University. Mm -hmm. So we've had some really good people, and we we have a good system where we train them and uh, our system, and they know how to run the business the way it's properly done. So. So you said that your audience changed over time. Um, would you say that your market now is, um, what, who, who is your market um, in terms of socioeconomic status? Uh, basically, you know, when it comes to feet, if your feet are hurting, mm -hmm. you know, if you got a toothache or your feet's hurting, it don't matter what status. People want comfortable shoes and they'll spend the money on comfortable shoes. So. We don't really compete on price. We're not going to be Target. We're not going to be Payless or whoever's mm -hmm. out there, mm -hmm. Amazon. We don't even sell the same products most times. If they're going one way, I'm going a different direction. But what we do compete is service and, and sit and fit and understanding how we help, help the customer get the right product. So we're looking basically to grow our business by uh, finding that market. You know, one of the things I'm doing now is uh, working with podiatrists and physical therapists and uh, introducing them to us. For example, uh, just about four weeks ago, mm -hmm. I went to Dr. Mitchell on 47th Street, uh, uh, Lake Park. He has a mm -hmm. foot and ankle clinic there where your Foot Locker used to be. And uh, he didn't know me from Joe Blow. I went in there and had a foot exam. I had my little bag, <laughs> and uh, you know, I was doing feet, and I introduced myself. I gave him a two-minute pitch. I said, hey, you know, I'm Bruce Wesley. We got the shoe store in Hyde Park. We, 
we fit orthotics, we fit mm -hmm. shoes that are hard to fit, we have shoes that, you know, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know me. And I explained what we were doing and he liked it because he was sending his patients all the way up to corporate stores, New Balance, all the way up north, mm -hmm. downtown and so forth. And they're right here in the neighborhood, we got it. And a lot of people just don't know we're here. You know, we've been here 50 years and a lot of people don't know we even exist because we're kind of buried away there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, the problem these podiatrists have is they, patients come in, they'll spend four or $500 on these orthotics and then they'll get these orthotics and they can't fit them in the shoes. You just can't walk into a warehouse and find a sh shoes for these. Mm -hmm. So they really need to be custom fitted. And it's about having the right type of shoe that's deep enough to accommodate these orthotics, wide enough toe boxing and so forth. And that's where we come in. So you don't literally have to look like Forrest Gump anymore. Mm -hmm. You can really look cool and still be comfortable. And that's where we bring in fashion, comfort, deep toe boxing, the type of shoes that would work for that. And he was amazed at what we had. So he's already sent in about four mm -hmm. customers now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've been doing that and I want to grow my business that way. It's a niche. Yeah, would you say these shoes are good shoes? I threw them off a little bit there. <laughs> Yeah, because they're bad. They look, they look nice. They look like they're comfortable. Yeah, they are comfortable. They got a nice round toe. You know? I have a habit of looking at people's shoes now. You know. <laughs> no, you passed. You passed. Okay. 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 Now comfort is very important to me. Oh, so yeah, I grew yeah. up with my mom saying that her feet were bad and mm -hmm. she had calluses because she said, you know, growing up they weren't, you know, kind oh, of yeah. similar to your dad. I yeah. mean, she didn't have shoes. Right. And so very early on, she was very into having shoes that were comfortable for me. Okay. Um, and, you know, when my son came along, I had to buy Stride Right. I don't know what your view is on Stride no, Right. No, but Stride was Right not, back in the days was the, was, uh, the bomb. was the Bentley of kid shoes, you know, they were the best. They have not, they're not like they well, were back, back then. Off. Yeah, they've they're fallen off, off a little. You know, they're more, uh, you know, you can find them anywhere now. They're, they're not bad shoes still, but mm -hmm. we have, a, we've taken it to another level. We import some shoes from Croatia. They're called Frodo, F-R-O-D-O. Mm -hmm. And they're amazing shoes. They're just for children. The leathers are like buttery soft, mm -hmm. very good quality, mm -hmm. just beautiful shoes. Children love them. Parents love them. You know, mm -hmm. they're a little bit pricier, but... You know, get what you pay for, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we've done a lot of talking about shoes, yeah. and I'm excited. Yeah. I'm ready to come to your store, and yeah, sure. later we're going to, um, you're yeah. going to get a chance to pitch us some stuff in your store. So you've yeah. been working hard all day, and you've worn comfortable shoes to support you right. all day. You get out from work. What do you do? What is it? What do you do for fun? What do you do when you get out from work? Oh, <laughs> well, I, uh, I like to relax. I, uh, I'm a big... Um, I'm a big musician. Uh, I like music. I like mm -hmm. a lot of old music. I like like uh, I listen to a lot of uh, vintage music, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, Nina Simone. I like uh, uh, I like that kind of music. I like uh, music from the '70s. I'm kind of stuck in the '70s, you know. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I like some Al Green. I like a lot of now. I like uh, this guy Gregory Porter. I had tickets to go see him earlier this year, and of course that guy killed me. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. I had a uh, Tickets, uh, Chicago Theater, and I said, "Wow, I've always wanted to sit in the balcony in Chicago Theater." Got me balcony seats, everything. I was so excited that they canceled the show. <laughs> However, they have extended it. It's supposed to come back in uh, February or March, mm -hmm. so I'm hoping things get back. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I love music. Uh, I like to ride my bicycle on the lakefront. Mm -hmm. um, I like to, I'm a, I have an old house, so I like to do a, a lot of restoration in the old house. Mm -hmm. So uh, just, you know, keep busy, main thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if someone were to come to town and they were looking for um, a restaurant to eat at, um, what might you recommend? Home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can cook! <laughs> yeah, home cooking. Home cooking is the best. There's a lot of good restaurants, but man, I really like, I, I didn't when I was young, but I love cooking now. Okay. I really like to, you know, now that you have all these different avenues, YouTube and everything, I, I really pride myself on cooking. I do like to go out and get some good food, though. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's nothing like good old home cooking, I tell you. So are you Southern <laughs> Comfort? What kind of cuisine? Southern Comfort all the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I love some, you know, coming up in Louisiana, I love some good gumbo. Mm -hmm. Seafood gumbo, and man, can't beat it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you mentioned your dad kind of passing you this torch for uh, the shoe store. 
Um, also, I noticed your name, you're a third. So that implies there was a second and a first. Well, let me tell you, I, <laughs> my dad was a preacher, and I have two okay. brothers. I'm the only one that's not a preacher. Mm -hmm. My younger brother is a dynamic speaker and preacher in the, mm -hmm. in the Virginia area. He's well known across as Howard, Reverend Howard Wesley, doing okay. a lot of dynamic things across the country. My older brother is also a uh, preacher, mm -hmm. and uh, so you know, uh, it's always one, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but I'm a very spiritual person. Right. I always tell them I save souls, but a different kind of soul. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, I was blessed to have a good foundation and a good family. And, uh, so your dad had three boys. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, and then I have a sister who's dynamic too. She's uh, actually. Uh, Executive President of Mount Sinai Hospital, uh, okay. so Deborah Wesley. She's mm -hmm. yeah. I was the only one that really got into the shoe business. My brother is also in the retail business too. My older brother, mm -hmm. he has a, a great hat store on 87th Street. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know about him. It's a small store, but it's a little men's boutique with mm -hmm. a lot of nice hats and uh, shoes and stuff. Uh, it's a little different market. Mm -hmm. It's a little more of a different marketplace there, but he's really catered it to that market and doing a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're passionate about, um, you know, we also interviewed another uh, business owner who's inherited the business from his dad. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's a tricky thing. Some people want to do it and others, it is mm -hmm. more burdensome. Mm -hmm. um, have, has this felt like something you feel oh, you yeah. wanted to do? I, I passionate? wanted to do it ever since I was in high school. I just had to, you know, I used to go to these trade shows with my dad when I was younger, mm -hmm. and he would say, hey, son, pick out the shoe. Which one do you like? This one or that one? Mm -hmm. I'd say, oh, I like this one, dad, you know? And then I would go to these shows, and then eventually I'd say, hey, dad, well, how about we go over that booth over there and mm -hmm. check out this? And eventually, I was doing all the buying. Mm -hmm. I was buying and doing everything before computers and all that. And eventually, I was uh, merchandising. I was doing mm -hmm. the merchandising. I was doing the window trims. I was doing the schedules. I was doing everything. Mm -hmm. So I just learned the business literally from the ground up. Mm -hmm. you know? And do you see yourself passing it down to someone? Will it remain Wesley Shoe Store? Or yes, uh, that's the plan to, uh, you know, to be able to mentor someone else into the business. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely would like to do that. Unfortunately, on April 3rd, I lost my son. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a student at Stanford, a very good, smart young man. And, you know, uh, but you know, he's 31 years old, and uh, you know, the whole family was, you know, uh, you know, a little distraught on that. But uh, I would like to mentor someone into the mm -hmm. business, and mm -hmm. I, I meet a lot of good young people every day, mm -hmm. and I work with a lot of, you know, people. So mm -hmm. I think that it will come along, and you know, I've been, you know, working yeah. on that. So. Yeah. Yeah, and was he your only child? No, I have a daughter too. She's okay. she's awesome. She's uh, uh, everybody's uh, awesome in your family. Well, she is. <laughs> uh, she really is. Yeah, yeah. I have I have I actually have uh, two daughters. Uh, I have one is out in California. I have a daughter who's here in, in the Chicago area, mm -hmm. and she's doing an uh, awesome job. She has a family just remarried and mm -hmm. doing a great job with her family. You know, mm -hmm. and, you know. Uh, so she's worked in the store. I've had everybody, everybody under me has worked in the, in the store, store before. Yeah, uh, you know. So who knows how things will go? Yeah. Where do you see yourself five years from now? Uh, working smarter. Uh, you know, uh, working, uh, letting the business kind of drive itself. But I would like to, I would like the store to be more known. You know, mm -hmm. when you say Wesley's, they'll think, oh, Wesley's Juice. Mm -hmm. Right now, again, even though we've been here five decades, nobody really knows, like, you know, about us. Just some, you know, some people do, but a lot don't. Yeah. So I like the name to be out there. I like our website to be driven more mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that it's uh, driving itself and, and people are shopping our website more. Thank God we've had it because during COVID, it's increased Mm -hmm. Phenomenally, I mean, we've we've uh, probably we used to have the website and we'd sell a shoe here and there, but now it's like every day it's clicking all over the country and people are discovering us. Good, good, good. Yeah. I don't know if you know Estrelada. Um, her name's Blondie, but she, we're in a knitting group together. Okay. And so she had your shoes on. Well, she had a pair of shoes on. I was like, where'd you get those? Oh, okay. She's like Wesley. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So people are slowly discovering us, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah.
Yep, yep. Um, mm -hmm. So, what do we, what what can we say as we're coming to the end of our time? Mm -hmm. uh, what can we say that might entice or attract or draw people to your store? Oh, what can we say? Well, I mean, if you want to experience the the ultimate service, the number one independent shoe retailer in the country, uh, in, the, in the state of Illinois. If you want to experience oh, that's good. ultimate service, mm -hmm. you should visit our store. If you can walk in and, of course, we during COVID, we have certain um, protocol that we do, you know, sanitizing hands and, and a mask are required and everything. But when it gets to normal, we are the best. Uh, we do things that are quite unusual, like shoe tying classes for the younger kids. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of things and we're involved with the community. We do things uh, that are in for the long run to, to build relationships and to get people to experience the sit and fit experience. And so we, we're, we're in it for the long haul and we, we right. stand behind what we do. So. so I really like the idea you're into comfort. I have always been into comfort mm -hmm. and you know, all of my life my friend, one friend has said you wear the ugliest shoes. Because <laughs> you know, for a long time comfort yeah. and shoes. Yeah, well. Kind of. Yeah, you know. I know. They were kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you have to look like Forrest Gump. But no, now you can still look cute and be comfortable. And a lot of people don't cute. realize that. Yeah, so that's and like, become I brought a few samples to show you. So, well, hey, yeah. I want to see. I'm sure people want to see these samples. Yeah, so yeah. Let's so, here's some of our product. Now, a lot of people aren't leaving the house, so house shoes are really big right now. Mm -hmm. These are fun. These are leopard prints. These are from a company called Allegria, and they're really cushiony. Look at them. Mm -hmm. Now they come in solid colors too, but I brought that little uh, print just to show you. But feel the cushion in there. So comfortable. Oh. And, yeah. Oh. Unbelievably. Nice and warm. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know for the house and so forth. Now, uh, I was telling you, some, don't have to look like Forrest Gump. These are cool shoes. These are by a company from Sweden called mm -hmm. On. And to me, these are really, you can dress them up or down nowadays. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Comfortable, lightweight. And uh, you see how it's got this little toggle here. You don't even have to tie it. Yeah, wow. really cool shoes. And guess what? Waterproof. 100% mm -hmm, mm -hmm. waterproof. Yeah. So. We and do, those are basically adult. They don't come in children's sizes. No, just adults. So we do them for men, and we even do them for women, and we do them in a variation of colors. They're on our website, but great shoes. Unbelievable. And are they good for winter? Do they guarantee to keep your feet warm? Uh, warm. These are designed more for outdoor. This particular model, they do make a whole group that's more for the gym. Mm -hmm. or walking or running. This particular one I brought because it's outdoor and they were both waterproof. Okay. Yeah, I got a pair of myself. Love yes. them. Yes. Yeah, it's so comfortable. So that's another group. Uh, a lot of our runners are familiar with this company called Hoka. Super light. Mm -hmm. Not that fancy, but it's unbelievably comfortable. Then uh, we do some men's for the man who likes to dress up in a nice yeah. uh, sharp shoe. This is a classic style. It's uh, it's called a chukka boot. It's designed for comfort and style. You know, I can wear this with a pair of jeans, a pair of dress slacks, whatever. Lots of colors in it too, black, brown. This is cognac. And our shoes all go to size 15. So a lot of guys that go to these places are stopping at 12, 13. No, we go to 15, and if we're able to get 16, we'll special mm -hmm. order mm -hmm. for people. So it's another thing. Uh, this I think you'll like. These are kind of cute. See? It's got a heel, but it's got a nice round toe, yes. and it has a nice leg on here. A lot of women have a fuller calf, uh -huh. fits great on, looks good on. You can dress it up, you know. This is a local designer. Okay. okay. Uh, these are from Spain. It's a company called Picalinos. Picalinos. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that cool? That's a nice one. That is short nice. boots are really big now. That's why okay. I brought a lot of short boots. Short boots are in. This is a vintage look. It is. Yeah, that looks like something from 1918. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's very in now. Granny is in style now. <laughs> and it's comfortable because all of your shoes yeah, feel the leather are comfortable. Yeah, it's got a nice round toe. What's cool about this one, you should try this one on. I should? Yeah, okay. you should try this one on. This one, what's cool about this, it's um, it's one of those boots like you don't even have to tie it. 
it's like a glove leather. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See how it just slips right on? And it comes in more colors. And I just zipped it up. In the, the first time you may have to tie it, but that's just that easy. See how great they look yeah, on? Yeah. They're beautiful shoes. That is. Yeah. We even do some handbags too. I brought a couple of those. This is made from recycled pop bottles. I it's like that. It converts to a backpack. Mm -hmm. That takes uh, 22 pop bottles, not pop bottles, water bottles, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. It takes 22 water bottles to make a bag. <laughs> this is, that is that cool? That is so Yeah, and pretty. it comes in lots of colors. I brought this color because I love it. Mm -hmm. And it's all kind of compartments in there. It has wow. like hidden compartments everywhere. A great and you can travel carry bag. different kinds of yes, way. yes. They have variations on it. Mm -hmm. There's one here with a, with a we call crossbody. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. comes in lots of colors. Same thing, mm -hmm. made from water bottles. And then a lot of our traditional customers love the Birkenstocks. Yes. So in the winter they close the toe. But they still have the traditional ones. We have it with the lining or without the lining, but they're so comfortable. They're good. This could be like an indoor outdoor shoe. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. love my Birkenstocks. Uh, we do some importing of some shoes like this. Now this shoe has a keen toe on there, yes. but even though it has that pointed toe, it fits like a glove because the fit is all around the ball of the foot. Another one you should try. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, this is so cute. I thought about you when I brought this. It comes in other colors too. I love this distressed leather, mm -hmm. the variations on it. And is that like a black silver or a blue? Or? Yeah, like a black silver. Oh. And look, see, it fits like a glove. Look at that. Yeah. Isn't that nice? That is. Yeah. Oh and you would never goodness. think it's got that pointed toe, but it fits as good as a round toe shoe. Oh, yes. This yeah. is nice. Now, we have diversified our business, and we've gone into some outerwear now. Mm -hmm. This is a company from Canada. And they, they do some distressed, uh, this is like a camouflage look. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's nice about it is reversible. You can wear it inside or out. Wow. And uh, it's a really cool look on. I think this is your size. Oh, you wow. Try it, on. it looks so cute on it. It's got the hood. I'm going to have to work three jobs. <laughs> well, we're trying to fit you from head to toe now. Oh. Look at there. Yeah. Boy, I took a good and guess on that. that's nice warm. It runs full. Now, believe it or not, that's a small. Really? I would have thought I was a large. No. See, that fits you good. Yeah, and it feels nice Isn't and nice? toasty. Yeah, and yeah. Warm. It's got the nice hood on there. It really goes Pockets. nice with these shoes. Oh, wow. Gosh, okay. <laughs> Let me show you one other thing from this company. One, one of my favorites. This wow. here, it's layered inside with the like a little vest in there. It's all part of the same coat here. Isn't that cute? So it kind of keeps in, you warm Yeah, in it the keeps winter. you warm. Yeah, yeah. It's and you nice. see how they extend this out here. It's got the pockets really mm -hmm. cute on. Lots of colors at the store. I just brought a couple to tease you with. Yeah. Yes, you must get by Wesley Shoe Store. <laughs> I've seen some other stuff that just is beautiful. Okay, great. Something for everyone. Kids, babies, adults, oh, seniors. Oh, we didn't talk about children. <laughs> people with foot challenges. That's right. Okay. So, do you dream shoes? What's your relationship with shoes, you know? Yeah, I eat, sleep, and drink shoes sometimes. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I love shoes, you know. It's, uh, it's an art, you know. So we, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's part of my DNA now. Yeah. So I was talking to someone and different people look at different things when they see people. And this person said they always look to see what a person's wearing. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that what a person is wearing tells you a lot about them or you wouldn't, you wouldn't say that? Uh, yes and no. I do have a habit of looking at people's footwear and their shoes and it does kind of give you an indication of their, you know. So yeah, I kind of, I kind of sway with that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you could have any superpower in the world, what would be your superpower? A superpower? Oh, wow, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, my superpower would be to, um, a superpower. Uh, I would say my superpower would be to, to predict the future. Okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> that, would be, that would be my superpower. You want to see the future? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a superpower. Yeah, so. Yeah, um, and if you had one wish, what would that wish be? 
One Wish. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a good one too. Uh, my one wish would just to be uh, where, I know it sounds kind of corny, but you know, if everyone had an equal chance at doing things where it's a level playing field, you know what I mean? A lot of times it's not. Yeah. And uh, that would be probably my one wish, you know? Quality. Everybody have the opportunities, the same opportunities. Yeah, sounds like a really good wish. A lot of people use it on themselves, so thank you for yeah. <laughs> thinking about others. And then the question I ask everybody as the final question is, what's on your bucket list to do? What would you like to do before you transition to the other side? Oh, gosh. So, so <laughs> I know. So, so, so I know. I, how should I ask that question? Because, yeah, like, which, if I say bucket list, is that clear yeah, enough? Yeah, it just sounds so morbid. <laughs> What's what what's on your bucket list to enhance the rest of your life? Oh know? well, I, I, personally, personally, I want to do a lot of traveling and do a lot of things. I, I like to uh, learn a lot of different cultures and things. Mm -hmm. As far as our business, I would like to keep it thriving and keep it growing, mm -hmm. and uh, keep mentoring new generations into there, and keep uh, new people coming in and experiencing that sit and fit uh, way of showing merchandise and, and uh, shopping. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Well, we wish you the best, and we hope that this podcast will allow people to know Bruce Wesley a little bit better and uh, bring some traffic to your store. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you for being on Cricket Courage. My pleasure.